In 2005, the U.S. Department of Agriculture began phasing out a tobacco quota and price support program that began in the 1930s. The tobacco buyout program allowed many smaller growers to retire or phase out raising the crop without financial strain. As domestic demand for tobacco declined over the years, so had its value to Virginia growers. In 1981, Virginia tobacco crop was worth $266 million. By 2005, it had declined to $61 million. But even as the domestic tobacco market was changing, demand for tobacco exports began to grow. And new customers with new priorities began buying cigarette tobacco, people who wanted to be sure it was produced organically. Well, Virginia growers have found a niche with organic tobacco production, and obviously there's a lot of different organic crops in Virginia, but the organic tobacco, uh, up till now we've had one primary company purchasing this tobacco. Uh, we've got a new international buyer of the tobacco, but I think it fits uh, many of our growers in Virginia very well. Uh, there is a higher income potential for organic tobacco, so I think it fits particularly well for our uh, smaller acreage growers. Surprisingly, Virginia tobacco is the largest organic commodity in Virginia, according to a recent USDA survey. Out of the $49.1 million generated by organic sales in 2015, $18.7 million was attributed to tobacco products. John Bledsoe raises about 78 acres of organic tobacco near Blackstone, Virginia. He starts his crop in a large greenhouse in February, transplants it to the field in late April to early May, and completes his harvest in the early fall. If you would have told me five or six years ago that I was going to grow organic, I would have said you were crazy. But uh, the main reason I do it is for monetary. It's a lot more labor intensive, and if you look back, we probably put as much labor into uh, an acre of tobacco as we did 50 years ago. And we, they really suggest and recommend us not using mechanical labor, uh, using more hand labor. While tobacco represents 38 percent of all organic farm sales, it is in familiar company. Organically produced broiler chickens and milk were also top sellers. Organic vegetables and other crops rounded out the top five categories. The general public has uh, an affinity for all things organic. Now, the, the tobacco companies that are selling organic cigarettes, they do not make any claims regarding the, the safety or the health uh, aspect of organic tobacco, organic tobacco products. But uh, I think there may be a tendency to, uh, or the cigarettes that they are are formulating with this tobacco is really all tobacco, not a lot of additives. Bledsoe raises his tobacco under contract for Santa Fe Natural. He says in a way they've gone back to much older production methods. That's because the buyer will test for chemical residues on all the leaf he sends in. It, it is difficult and it takes, I think you're a little bit more at the hands of Mother Nature because you don't have the chemicals to with the herbicides, with the weeds and we have growths, which are, we call locally suckers, that come in between the tobacco that we, it, we, we used to put a uh, contact on it, and we have to do a lot of it by hand, and that's why they do, do not encourage the mechanical harvest. But uh, some way or another, people are always going to smoke, and that's my opinion. After somewhat of a decline in 2005, tobacco production of all types has rebounded in the Old Dominion. Tobacco sales brought more than $106 million back to the farm last year. But in the decades since the buyout, most growers have much larger farm operations than in the past. Reed says organic tobacco offers smaller growers a good income and an opportunity to grow tobacco on as little as 40 acres of land. In Nottoway County, this is Dave Miller.